now recording. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Welcome, everybody. Last, uh, last pocket network builder call of the year. Uh, today, we are going to get some feedback from the coder team on the status of our last Morse update. Uh, and then I'm going to give you guys some updates on how we've been doing uh, with the Shannon build. Uh, and then just kind of queue up next year, talk a little bit maybe towards the end about um, uh, format of this meeting and just kind of changing some timelines for next next year when we all get back. Uh, but let's uh, let's take it away. Everybody can uh, see the share, right? I can, but it's on the first screen. Yep. Okay. All right. Yep. There's our agenda. All right. Um, coder guys, feel free to jump on, hop off, uh, hop on. Want to explain any of this a little more? But um, one of the things that we have been working towards is our last Morse build, um, and coder uh, is holding for the keys to that in the sense that they've got um, several PRs that uh, they had pulled up that were significant that we needed to get into that. Uh, so it looks like RTTM uh, has been merged, Max Chains has been merged, AppStakes um, during sort of a, 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 a vetting round there and uh, reward shares um, actively being addressed. Um, so that is their update. Um, Hopefully this is the stuff that we can get wrapped up within the next day or two, so we could potentially get a testnet deployment done by the end of the week. Does that still look possible, or we're going to start like losing some resources here uh, as we get close to the weekend? At the end of the uh, week, we should deploy whatever we have already. Uh, we have uh, two changes merged. Uh, regardless of what happens to others, they should be deployed. Uh, they will get some uh, testnet time. That's always goodness. Uh, and if there are yep. issues, uh, it's going to be easier to locate the issue with fewer changes uh, in the system. And as the others come, uh, we can update the testnet uh, again uh, sometime next week. But yeah, uh, this Friday, we should deploy what we have. Okay. So what then we'll want to do is like wherever we are with AppStake and reward share, we can park it. We'll get your updates done, get a testnet deployment. There definitely won't be anyone around next week that's going to be willing to do any testnet up updates. Um, but probably somewhere in early Jan, Jan, Jan 3rd, when we get back, um, then we can probably we can proceed with uh, AppStake's or reward share as another update. Um, essentially building all of this on testnet and then uh, then we have one main net, last main net upgrade to do, uh, which maybe like by mid January we'd be able to accomplish. Um, does that sound like the new timeline? Yes, uh, that sounds about right. Okay. Uh, you never know, we are only Tuesday, so uh, the, the remaining two features might get reviewed and be merged. And uh, yeah, we will have everything by Friday. Yeah. But uh, regardless, whatever okay. we have, we should start getting them tested. So testnet should be ready to upgrade uh, this Friday. Okay. Um, I will I don't see that we have any test ma maintainers on the call right this moment, but I will let them know and get a update from them. Um, and I will add you guys to the uh, group with them for right now. Yeah, um, that way we can... Uh, facilitate the upgrade. Okay, sounds good. Um, the only thing I'll, uh, else I'll say about Morse is that um, some folks were having a bit of an issue with Faucet. Breezy spent a bunch of time on it, um, and we should be a okay to go now. So thanks, Breezy. All right, cool. Moving on to the, to the Stuff we all want to talk about more. All right, Shannon. So it's been there's been some awesome stuff happening on the Shannon side. Um, 
first big call out is we did a deployment to the Mocha testnet, uh, the Celestius testnet. So we got some things deployed there. Um, so that's a big step in the right direction to just be able to get all that tooling set up to be able to continually do that. Um, this won't be the first test net. Uh, you know, it's pretty, you know, it's uh, it's typical for teams to, you know, take a few attempts to finally get something that they would, would consider, you know, longstanding and then we'll invite everyone in for integration testing and some other things. But for right now, this is a, a big milestone for the team. So super excited that that has been done. Um, the other thing, as, as you would have recalled from the meeting a couple of weeks ago, is we told you then that we had an RFP out for uh, selecting the sequencer. Uh, the team, after reviewing all of those proposals and having some conversations around it, has decided to move forward with Astria as our like sort of first solution um, and with Calder kind of as our backup. The advantage there being that Astria is building a decentralized sequencing network uh, on Celestia um, uh, with a role kit integration. We don't have that yet, but it's coming. Um, so it's a great industry or sort of ecosystem partnership for us because they're sort of building in the same modular stack that we are. Uh, so that's really important. They're working with a lot of the same technology, a lot of the same people. Uh, they came out of their founding team, uh, at least one of their co-founders came out of the Celestia project where he actually worked on Roll Mint, which was the precursor to RollKit. So super, uh, super, tech, um, super smart group of guys uh, and the team over there. Um, so, and then, like I said, like a lot of ecosystem alignment. So we're bullish on their project. Um, their test night is coming in Q1, sort of their timelines right now. We're lined up pretty well with ours. Uh, and you know, we've got, um, uh, we've got channels and open communication channels now set up with them and, uh, we'll stay on that and keep informing each other of progress and things. Um, the other project we talked about was the audit related to the SMT. You would have heard about that if you would have attended last week. Uh, Harry did a great job explaining all that. So we've been receiving proposals. We've got a couple in from Zelic and Certec. We're waiting on others, but we'll start reviewing those and ultimately make a decision here. Uh, some of these teams have like some immediate availability. Others, it's looking like uh, early Q1, but um, we can basically parallel path this as we're uh, continuing to build out um, uh, the rollup. <clears throat> the other project that got kicked off this week uh, was our rep pocket migration research. So uh, we, as you may know, uh, Raid Guild actually delivered the rep pocket and the bridge uh, as part of that project um, on Morse. So we sort of re-engaged them to lead our research spike for us to evaluate our options when thinking about how we would do a state migration over to the rollup. And included in, in that evaluation is like also looking at other interruptibility protocols in the ecosystem, excuse me, uh, and helping us make a decision as to like uh, the order of events here and, and how we might think about approaching the migration so that A, it's super secure and safe for everyone, uh, and B, um, you know, we're like, we're, we're building towards what we ultimately want to be and not building ourselves into a corner or some kind of dead end. Um, so we're going to jump into a little more like Shannon stuff, just so you can guys can see like the the guts of things. But I want to just kind of give you like TLDR on on some of these initiatives. Okay, um, so uh, I wanted to I wanted to pull this slide up, um, particularly because I had a couple of interesting calls with some uh, builders in in uh, in our ecosystem at Pocket over the last week or two. Um, and there's still some like confusion around what exactly like we're building. And I get that because we've been adding pieces as we go. Uh, and you wouldn't, we wouldn't have been able to name Astria as the sequencer that we selected uh, until last week. Um, but I just wanted everyone to start to maybe think about, <clears throat> this is kind of the way I kind of think about it at a really high level. So this is like the 10,000 foot view of the, of the world, right? So I think about this in layers with like Celestia being the bottom layer. It's like ultimately where data will live. And then the execution layer at the top, which is uh, essentially the utility that the team is building that we all know is pocket network. Um, 
So for that, as you would have um, heard earlier about, um, you know, we selected RollKit to be able to do that. And that is just like a, a, a neutral and independent project came out of Celestia. It just allows you to uh, build these modular rollups faster and it supports like multiple execution environments. So uh, if you need to be ABM, they have a solve for that and or ABCI and some other things. Um, and it also allows us to stay sovereign, meaning that like, you know, we control what's going on at the execution lab. Um, and now we're going to work with this uh, sequencer, Astria. Um, and again, like reasons there is like, we like that they're building uh, with decentralization up front. Um, and the way that really works is that they're going to have their own validator set at the sequencer layer. Uh, and, it'll, and they will basically uh, it'll look a lot like a POS network. Um, but essentially their job is to bundle what they're seeing happen at the execution layer and, and write that data to Celestia. Uh, and like I said, their test net's coming and they are actually actively working on a, a direct integration with RollKit. Where now we're gonna, in a position where we'll probably have to kind of do it ourselves, but um, it's coming. Um, settlement, looking like Celestia. Unless, like, that's a mistake by me, and uh, all chance I see him on the call can jump in and clarify. But, um, but basically, like, what, what ultimately gets written to chain, right? And what do we mean by written to chain, even? So, if we're parking proofs at, at the data availability layer, then that means that anyone should be able to verify those proofs are there, uh, you know, with a light client implementation, which is like super cool. Um, Interruptibility sort of TBD at this point, like we don't know yet, uh, but like Hyperlane is very active in the ecosystem. There are others, Slayer Zero, you've heard of some of these other interruptibility protocols. And all this does is allow us to like move assets around like with much more ease uh, when we think about wanting to be part of, you know, uh, support EVM, but also stay close to Cosmos ecosystems. And basically a lot of this is being driven by PNF strategy and where do they want wrap pocket and, and does it help? Uh, if we're able to put that into, say, uh, ecosystems where um, we would get value out of being there. Um, and value meaning that um, there's, uh, you know, low gas fees, um, there's like maybe a, a, a big DEX or um, some other centralized exchange that we listed on, things like that. So as the PNF team is evaluating, like where they want Rat Pocket to be, um, we're thinking about what would we need to do to be able to get it there and building a bunch of individual point to point, uh, you know, connectivity and custom merges and things like ultimately not the way to go. So we would want to look at something like an interruptibility protocol to help us with that. And then ultimately the data availability layer, right? So the big takeaway here is that we're not going to run every, everything here, right? So, um, and that's a, that's a fundamental change from where you've, uh, what you've seen the team do before, right? When we think about what Morse looks like, yep, Tendermint, uh, et cetera, like, but we run the whole stack. Um, in this case, uh, all we're really responsible for is that top layer, the execution layer, um, and everything else we're gonna outsource. So sequencing gets outsourced, uh, where we're settling to, interruptibility, data availability, all of that gets outsourced. Um, and so we don't have to, we will not be running a, a custom Celestia stack. Somebody thought that in a conversation that I had last week. Uh, so no, that's not what we're doing here. We didn't fork anything. We're gonna actually run on their mainnet uh, as, as a sovereign roll up. So um, just wanted to set the stage for this and I will continue to like fill out these pieces and. Uh, and ultimately, we'll start building out some uh, maybe lower level diagrams so you guys can understand like the flow. Um, what's very interesting about these environments for me is the way that um, uh, the way that sort of settlement works and like when you get uh, a guarantee that like, um, you know, uh, things are final. Um, it. It varies depending on layer, so uh, that that'll be interesting to kind of go through when we when we've got the whole thing and we can put the whole puzzle together. So on to more progress. Uh, so this is how this is the roadmap and how we challenged ourselves. These iterations obviously have a, a bunch of detail under them. I'm going to show you an expanded one of the previous in, in, integrate uh, iteration, but um, as you can see, we have this milestone um, that was targeted for. Uh, December, which was uh, essentially get um, some version of a testnet up. Uh, so I would say like that has been 
you know, we're, we're on a path to get there. Um, and super excited to see the team like actually deploying onto, onto Mocha and things. So if we expand the iteration that we're in right now, um, or sorry, this is the previous one. So this would be back to here, uh, iteration five. Um, that was our placeholder for there. You can see like team bit off and, and accomplished all of these tasks. About 20, 24 tickets got closed. Uh, and now we're working on um, this last load and discover iteration through the 22nd and then team will be on break, get their heads clear and then, uh, you know, come back, come back in January, guns blazing and uh, tackle the rest of it. Uh, but we're feeling pretty good about where we are. So um, before I jump off this, like uh, any questions related to Shannon, we do have some pretty good representation by the core dev team here today. Um, so if anybody does want to throw any questions out to them, like they are here in force, which is awesome. I know you got a question, Zach. You always have a question. Or code of us. No questions. Okay. All right. Well, I'm. Uh, I think the questions will start to come when we're when we're a little closer and uh, we can start having some interesting conversations about moving some of the stuff that you guys have been building for more so over. I think you already have had some of those conversations going, um, but that's going to be super cool. Uh, is how we're going to like ultimately test all of this when we start snapping it all together. Um, and so I don't know if maybe someone from the team wants to just maybe talk about that a little bit from maybe like a high level, no pressure if you don't, but, um, you know, I've certainly been thinking about it. Like, uh, you know, Mocha be our target. We'll be able to like snap into Austria there. There's other interesting stuff, but as we start bringing over more and more things, like that's where the, that's where all the action will be. That'll be a fun time. So we're like excited to drive towards that in Q1. Maybe, yeah, a good idea. Yeah, let's, let's, let us think about that. Uh, I don't have a question, but more of a request or feedback. I, I said this before, but I will use every opportunity to repeat that. Uh, for V1, for Shannon, it would be awesome to have a list of the features that is coming. Uh, for the littlest change that we do for V0, we have to write a proposal, we have to do a DAO voting, uh, get it reviewed and everything. And of course, V1 is a rewrite. It's a huge thing, right? And similar thing yep. needs to start happening soon, like very, very soon, uh, January, <laughs> early January kind yeah. of soon. So community can understand what really is coming, what features is going to be there in V1 and what features are planned for V1.1 or whatever. And so yep. that they can discuss maybe some of the features are missing and or some of them are not agreed upon. So we, we got to start doing that. Yeah, no, that's a great. Thank you for queuing that up. That was like, um, we did not pre-plan this. That was like, you just launched the softball over to me. So I appreciate it. So yes, um, one of the things I will be working on while the team is taking their, uh, taking their break is essentially um, compiling a punch list of like, these are the features that we're um, queuing up to ship for the V, you know, one O of, of Shannon. And you're right to call out that there'll be a 1.1 and a 1.2 and there'll be other versions of it. Um, but a like high level feature list of like what's going to be there on, on day one. Um, and then what we see coming, you know, uh, shortly after medium term after, et cetera. Uh, and I'll be able to share that out, uh, in January with team. I think also to your point, um, coder guys, um, you know, maybe this is also a great opportunity for PNF to think about some process improvements around, uh, uh, just sort of. Um, how features are uh, approved and deployed ultimately. Um, I know we've had some uh, conversations about that, um, particularly around uh, situations where um, they, you know, put a post together, uh, open uh, open something on the forum, um, they get it approved, but then um, 
you know, there may be some back and forth uh, as, as you're going through right now, like, and uh, you get some feedback on your feature, you make some changes. So like, what is allowed? Um, and, you know, that's always tricky because I think like um, some of the, some of the stuff I've heard from other community members is like, oh, well, you know, if the changes are uh, significant enough, they should have to go back through the voting again. And I'm like, oh, God, that sounds terrible for everybody. Um, so I'm, I guess, a little more liberal with that and would want to give dev teams like, uh, lat, you know, sort of enough space to uh, not have to like, very specifically lay out their complete implementation plans. It's more about what's the feature. And then as long as that's still the feature um, and how you choose to implement it. And if the implementation details changed because you got feedback from the community or from the core dev team or whatever, that should be fine. Um, so I've been kind of pushing back on some of that because I don't want these processes to become more difficult to manage or heavier weight on the devs, but actually like less heavy and anything that we can do to make things like lower friction in my mind is an improvement. Um, but open to hearing what others think about that. Cause it should be like, again, it should be like a group thing to update something like that. It should be sort of like an agreed upon, uh, process in, in the, uh, in the community. All right, everyone's already thinking about their their week off. I can tell. Okay, cool. Should have grabbed the like. Sounds like a sounds like a next year problem meme. This is like one of my one of my favorite ones. Uh, and and agreed, it is. Um, cool. Okay. Um, so floor's open. If anybody has any other topics they want to throw out. Questions, anything, now would be the time. If not, we're gonna wrap this one early and say like, you know, happy holidays, happy new year, and see you all in 2024. I've got um, just two housekeeping ones. Um, cool. Awesome. Easy one is I just wanna call out that the next builders meeting, I think we're gonna shift it. That way it's on Thursdays alternating with the community call. Is that correct? That is correct. Um, Great. Mondays and Tuesdays are becoming like uh, very heavy for PNF predominantly because of um, Jack's new schedule. So, so yeah, that would that would be much appreciated to uh, move it to Tuesday, Thursdays. Sorry, Thursdays. Great. So just so everybody knows, we're going to do that. We'll update the the invites, and then um, we just saw that Pocket Roll has its own docs, and I don't know who's maintaining that, but would love to get those into the official Pocket Doc. So. Mateo, if you or anybody here knows who's working on that and can point me in the right direction, that'd be great. Yeah, that was uh, news to me as well. So <laughs> community doing community stuff. So like, yeah. love it. But, but yeah, we should, uh, we should roll that up under the official docs for sure. Agreed. If anybody knows who it is, wants to DM me, that would be great. Otherwise, we will keep sleuthing. You say when you say pocket roll has its own docs, are you can you can you elaborate what you're referring to? We can. Um, oh, someone uh, someone dropped a URL uh, for pocketroll.com or something that's just got um, a whole bunch of what documentation on there. So um, no, it, let, it, let me jump like in. Just, this is that's the documentation being built and maintained by the protocol team. We're in the process of streamlining it, documenting it, having you know all the tooling you need to jump in. We deployed it for exploratory purposes. Um, I'm not sure who oh. publicized it, uh, so it's, oh, it's it got, a very it got much tweeted out. Yeah, somebody right. tweeted so it, Olshansky. It's it's okay. Just it's a work in progress. Um, it will eventually get merged into the official documentation. It's simply too early to do that. So, Got it. you know, we'll, we'll remove pocketroll.com and call it development. Do not read this. Do not read this. That in progress. 
that will be integrated in the future into the official pocket doc dot pocket roll dot com. Uh, but how it got tweeted out, I'm not sure. Okay. We'll ask to have that tweet removed. Um, appreciate that, Olshansky. And then, uh, yeah, whenever you're ready, or I'll just check in with you like every couple of weeks and see uh, when they're ready to go to the regular docs. And if you have somebody on your team maintaining it that I can just give permissions to and kind of streamline all this, that would be great. All right. Thanks. That would be, yeah, that, that would be cool to, to, do it, to do it that way because I feel like we're going to end up in some kind of fragmented documentation situation. So, yeah, let's do that. It's fine if they live in multiple places, like, but, but yeah, we would want to like, we would want to make sure that there's no discrepancies or differences between the stuff on the, uh, in Git book and, and whatever else is getting built over there. My understanding that was going to be more like Grove centric and talk predominantly about like how to integrate gateways and things. But even that we should probably should live in both spots. Thanks, Mateo. Yeah, just essentially looking to have um, wherever people are looking at the docs be the spot where they can find everything they need. So open to suggestions if they should live somewhere else too. I don't actually have a strong opinion, but um, yeah, thanks. Awesome. All right. Ian, how are you, man? Hope all is well. Um, all right. I, if no one has any other questions, comments, or concerns, um, we, can, we can wrap this one early. Going once, going twice. Cool. All right, uh, Michael. I see you drop in a chat about working on docs. Did I miss anything? Let's uh, um, let's follow up you and I and Zach maybe. Um, okay. Um, Happy holidays, whatever holidays you celebrate, and we will see you in the new year. Thanks, everybody. Happy holidays, happy new year. Happy holidays, thanks, y'all.